Uh, so my name is Ekaterina Moraru, and uh, you can find me on Twitter at Valika. And today I want uh, to talk about basic principles and tips and tricks that uh, all the developers should know and they should be able to apply them in their uh, open source project. In the user experience field, that there are a lot of patterns, and I won't go into patterns, but I provided here some links for patterns and principles if you want to explore and go find out more. Uh, what I will cover are basic principles, and one principle means uh, having a fundamental rule about the practice of design. And if you were to know just one principle, that would be be consistent in your interface. Uh, having a consistent interface helps your user learn one thing once and then apply that knowledge to other areas uh, of, of your interface. And what it means to be consistent? It means to have um, uh, similar functions and meaning for similar uh, uh, objects. But being consistent, it doesn't mean that uh, all the buttons need to be the same. There are several types of buttons, and uh, your forms and your interface should always uh, state what is the primary uh, action of that form. And primary actions are usually made with more contrast and colors in order to direct the, the user on what you want him to focus on have only one primary action on the screen, and it's, it is better to always uh, use verbs as actions uh, in the label name. So try to avoid um, confusing phrases or generic words like OK and yes, and instead use verbs, because users think in verbs, they want to delete something, they want to add an object, or they want to, to save it. Uh, and another thing, and a big debate in between the designer, is where should we place the buttons on a, bot on a model? Should they be placed on the left side, or on the right side? And while some designers might tell you that it's a matter of the operating systems and the style guides for that operating systems, I, I just want to show you some things to consider when you decide where to place them. For example, uh, left align is very good for vertical scanning. The user n just needs to read the title and then go to the button so he will know what to do. But the issue is when the user needs to read actually the, the description text. If they need to read the description text, then the reading flow changes uh, to, a, to a Z shape. And the problem with the Z shape on the vertical alignment is that they will first uh, read the, the primary button, they go to the secondary action, and they, they will need to go back because that's the action you want actually the user to take. So it's a bit slower than, than on, the right, um, on the right alignment. But another thing you need to consider is, are you designing for mobile or are you designing for, for desktops? Because um, on the mobile, the distance is not that big. So either on the left side or on the right side, it would be good. Some um, um, software actually put them uh, centered, and the buttons all, are all the full width. But on very large displays, and now we actually have like 4Ks and 8Ks displays, if you place them on the right side, uh, and you don't have columns, for example, you might create a discontinuum between the, the text and the buttons, so maybe left align would be better in, in cer certain cases. Um, here I just uh, display that on the right align, you make like an L shape, so it, it's harder for the user to reach those buttons. It also depends if you're what types of buttons you have in your interface. Uh, a common pattern is to have wizards, and wizards have like a next and a preview. And for Western culture, uh, when we read a book, we are kind of going from <laughs> left to right, so it's an, a more natural placement for the next button to be on the, on the right side. But uh, uh, no matter if you're choosing left or right, make sure that the primary button is aligned on the edge, because edges are more accessible and, again, the, the virtual scanning, uh, the vertical scanning. OK. Uh, Elio also mentioned colors. Colors are important to be accessible. but. Again, depending on the cultures, colors can have meanings. In Western cultures, red is used for errors and for danger action, while uh, green is used for, um, for success states. Uh, 
be very careful that uh, in Asia the meanings are reversed, so know your audience and know from uh, what target you need to design. But this doesn't mean if you know what color we can put on a, on a notification or a button, then we should use all the colors and have also uh, yellow and um, other kinds of blue. Try to limit your color selection to maybe have a, a primary, secondary. Even uh, tertiary actions are debatable. Some are using them only for f to, to showcase the cancel state. But uh, having a a danger a button and a color for destructive actions is important because if everywhere in the interface you are consistent, when the user will see the red button, he will know that uh, that action is important. So for destructive actions, use a contrastant uh, color, uh, always ask for confirmation, explain very well the consequences, and I know it's maybe a bit harder on the implementation side to provide support for undo or for version control, but uh, it will help the user to be able to fix um, their mistake in case they, they misclick uh, uh, on that destructive action. Okay. Um, Another big principle, it's called affordance. Uh, people might not know exactly what it means, but a common metaphor to try to explain affordance are doors. So um, when you see a door and it has like a, a circular a knob, uh, the user might understand that he needs to turn that, that knob in order to open the door. Uh, same if you want to... Um, let the user know that a door is open in a certain di direction. You could put like a... a Pull a pull knob in order for them to pull, and a flat um, a handle for them to push. So, affordant actually means giving cues on how the user may interact with that object without uh, uh, for them interacted with 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 it uh, in that place. They have some previous n knowledge, or the um, attributes of that um, uh, object gives him a clue what to do with the objects. And this principle can be applied also for links. So, uh, traditionally, links have been represented uh, by using the blue colors and underline. Uh, in the past year, because of um, a lot of designers, this, um, this trend has, um, let's say, decreased. But still, uh, if a user sees something that is blue and underlined, if he has previous web experience, he might know that that, that is a link. So, be careful when you're using the blue color for things that are not linked. And the same is also for buttons, because buttons have a click state. Uh, traditionally, they were represented using 3D objects, and they had like, like, like a lot of shadows and gradients. Now, with the flat uh, trends, uh, this is less. But if you would provide this kind of cues in your interface, uh, the interface would be more accessible and more the usability will increase, because the user would know uh, how they can interact with it. One discussion is when do, you, do we use buttons and when do we use links? And if it's much straightforward that we should not use buttons inside of the text because there might be some um, line height discrepancy or, or alignment, uh, the solution for this issue is not to use links everywhere. Buttons and links have been created for a very uh, particular purpose, so you should use buttons if you uh, needed for actions. If something interf in the interface changed the state of the interface by adding something or by deleting something, and links should be used for navigation somewhere that uh, you take the user in, in another section. Okay, so I know there was a big topic about buttons, but buttons and forms in general are, are very prominent, prominent in our, our interfaces. I also want us to go in some grouping principle. And uh, one of the basic principle is proximity, which states that objects that are close together are perceived to be related. And this principle can be easily applied in when you're doing menu design. Instead of having five separate groups, just by reducing the, the white space between the items, uh, now you have fewer groups, you have just three. Um, you have also here an example on how it was used to be done on the Gmail by placing uh, related items together. One notice, make sure that the items are actually related somehow and not just play with them because uh, it will be uh, better visually. Uh, 
Another principle is similarity, which states that object sharing attributes are perceived to be related, and you can play here with, uh, with color, with size, shapes, or orientation. So if you look at this picture and your brain is trying to uh, read it by lines, it will be much harder for, for your brain because it's uh, natural to go by columns because of the similarity uh, they go. And uh, if similarity and proximity are very, very powerful, there is an even more powerful um, law, which is called the uh, law of unity, uh, which overrides cues from proximity and similarity. And um, what it actually does is that if we connect things by lines and by borders, they automatically are perceived as part of the same group. Uh, be very careful with this because you might be tempted to have lines and borders everywhere. Uh, the more, if you add more lines, the interface would look more crowded, so try to limit. And in the past period, uh, we actually seen um, uh, going back to proximity by trying to increase the, the white space and by removing lines so, and falling back again on the, on the prox proximity principle instead of this principle in order when you create the uh, uh, interfaces. And here is an example of how you could use lines and borders in order to, to group form elements uh, in, a, in a screen. Okay, choice paralysis states that User might have paralysis when they see a lot of items that are very similar and he doesn't know how to compare them. And another rule is the Hicks law, which uh, says that the time to make the decision increases with the number and complexity of choices. Uh, this principle can be applied on, I don't know, on options when you want to buy something or to select something or to download or on menus, it, you can apply it everywhere. Make sure that you clearly differentiate the differences between the items, uh, keep as few as you can, even two, it would be ideal. And uh, if you can also recommend one of the, of the entries, it will help the user to make the decision faster and not feel frustrated of not knowing uh, what he can choose. Uh, Miller, in the, some cent a century ago, he made some studies on um, uh, the short-term memory of people. People were given a lot of words, and he was uh, quantifying how many of those words people can uh, remember. And uh, the conclusion then was uh, like seven plus minus two items. And for a very long time, this argument was given in order to limit the entries in the menu. Uh, Currently, these days, there are new estimates of 4 plus minus 1, and even this is debatable. So I don't have a magic number to give you <laughs> of how many items a menu should have. But the conclusion is try to limit uh, the, the entries in order to, to be easier for them to remember, to not need to go over again, and to, to know exactly where they are in the interface. A related principle is the um, serial position effect. In a serial position, we remember better the, the, the first and the last item in, in, a, in a sequence. So you can, if you want to remember this, just think of the alphabet. You always know how it starts and how it ends, but <laughs> in the middle, you might get confused in some parts. And um, you can apply uh, this together with chunking, which uh, says that if you have a large a large bunch of items, uh, you can make them more approachable if you split them in smaller groups. So instead of having um, eight items, if you break them in three, you are starting to have a first and last item for all these um, uh, items and item groups. Uh, some might say that uh, and actually, it's true to put the, the uh, most important things on the first and the second position, but also don't forget about the last. If it's last, it doesn't mean it's not that important. It might be actually very visible in menus and, again, in navigation. Chunking can be also used for... Um, for forms, so if you have a card number or a phone number, uh, people usually remember phone numbers by uh, having, um, uh, they split it in two or three digit sequences. And if uh, the interface you're creating, it's mapping to, to what they are used to, it will be much easier for them to, to know exactly what you want from them. 
uh, try to place the labels uh, on top, again for vertical scanning, it will be much easier for them to, to go over the form. Uh, highlight and explain the error in the context. Don't just have a general uh, place where you put all the errors. Instead, help the user to know exactly where he, he made the mistake. And uh, size field, fields accordingly. So I have here an example with the zip code, but the most classical example, it's on the credit cards. We have the CVS number at the back. So if a user is going to see an input that has three digits, he will automatically know that he after some steps that he needs to, to put that number there. Uh, having white background uh, forms, no, having a white input on a background uh, triggers something in the user that they want to fill it. Uh, so uh, uh, this will increase the completion for any of your forms, even for um, uh, things that are not uh, mandatory. And um, it's very important that when you're aligning numbers, you do a, a right alignment. I've seen very often things that are left aligned or, or center. If you write right alignment, then uh, the decimals will be on the decimals, the hundreds will be on the hundreds, and you will be very... Uh, it will be much easier for you to compare them. And this is not in uh, activity streams, but especially in tables, which tables should contain um, uh, numeric values and uh, is not limiting to, to numbers and to currencies but also to dates. So if you apply the same date format, uh, right align it in order to be easy to, to scan it. Uh, icons are very powerful in, in the interface but um, remember that uh, icons are not universal. The icons you see on the screen might be interpreted by some as being a search icon. Others might think it's a zoom, and others might think it's just a ping pong paddle. So uh, every time you have an icon, also put the label either next to it or as a tooltip on top of it. Um, a user, every, when he sees the, your interface for the first time, he will not know what that icon means, but it will be very uh, helpful in uh, subsequent uh, subsequential usages because he will uh, just be able to jump to the section he wants, and this is uh, why icons are very powerful um, in this regard. Um, Careful again with uh, with the colors and uh, uh, f because of accessibility, make sure that the icons are big enough and are clear. And uh, uh, if you have a color, maybe add some texture in order for for people to to differentiate between the the icons and the states. So I've went just in for you know very few basic uh, things, but I I can recommend uh, two books if you want to find uh, about more principle and more tips and tricks. And uh, um, my hope is that you learn something and you can apply it in the, the, your open source project of your choice. So you can find me now in Valika, and if you have any questions, you can ask me now or no, on Twitter. Um, that was brilliant. <laughs> um, I'm just wondering if you could recommend to people in the room any good resources that summarize those design principles you've been talking about, in case they want to go check them. So this is a collection from multiple books. Uh, you can use my <laughs> slides. Uh, there is the book about the principle, and uh, but it's all over because the UX field it's kind of uh, of collection of things, and it uh, has things from graphic design to psychology. Uh, yeah, <laughs> there's not a, a, a bi we don't have a Bible. <laughs> it would be very nice if we can compile one. Uh, yeah, thank you. We also have some resources uh, a section on open source design from some icons and some some uh, tutorials, but we could work more on that. Other question? Okay, if not, thank you so much for coming. Thanks.